Cyclone Amphan in Bay of Bengal has now developed into a super cyclone affecting the eastern coast of India, particularly the states of West Bengal and Odisha. These states together now have two challenges to face, one that is posed by COVID-19 pandemic and the other one super cyclone Amphan. This cyclone is now said to be the most dangerous cyclone in the last two decades. In this video, we learn what is a super cyclone and what factors in Bay of Bengal are giving rise to the formation of a super cyclone. Before Amphan, last such devastating and dangerous cyclone was observed in 1999, which is famously called as the 1999 Odisha cyclone. Let me quickly recap what happened then. October 29, 1999 is said to be a day of fatal miscalculations. It was on this day a super cyclone slammed the coasts of Odisha, which was called as Orissa then. Everyone knew the cyclone was coming, but nobody, nobody knew how bad it was going to be. And the major blunder was that the state government officials had underestimated the intensity of the cyclone and had miscalculated its path. Besides, not enough shelters were built to house tens of thousands of people who might be affected by the cyclone. And eventually, when the cyclone hit, the state government went into a complete confusion. The result? Tens of thousands of people died and many went missing. Thousands of bodies had to be bulldozed into a vast, faceless graves. More than 3.5 lakh houses were completely destroyed, several villages were completely washed away and more than 2 lakh animals were killed. And the damage to state's infrastructure was so huge that the state had to completely go out of contact with the rest of the world for one complete day. Besides state's miscalculations about the intensity of this cyclone, there was another major reason behind this incident. It was the unwillingness among the people to part with their life's belongings. Hence, most of the people decided to stay back despite severe warnings. There are sometimes events or episodes in one's life that bring about a complete transformation in a person's character. For Odisha, the 1999 super cyclone was one such event. Now, after this cyclone, Odisha began constructing cyclone shelters on a war footing. In 1999, before the super cyclone struck the coasts of Odisha, there were 21 shelters. But today, there are more than 900 cyclone shelters across the state. After the incident, Odisha also set up India's first disaster management authority. For its disaster management efforts, Odisha has consistently received appreciation from the United Nations. Now, despite these experiences, the states of Odisha and West Bengal are still very much affected by the new super cyclone that is Cyclone Amphan. We have previously made a separate video on tropical cyclones, its genesis and its effects. If you have not watched, please go and watch it. Now, like you all know, a cyclone takes birth on a warmer sea surface. So Cyclone Amphan originated from a low pressure area which was located about 200 kilometers away from the east coast of Sri Lanka. And Amphan is the first tropical cyclone of the 2020 North Indian Ocean Cyclone season. There are few basic things about the classification of cyclones which you should know. Please note that tropical cyclones are graded according to maximum wind speeds at their center. At the lowest end are depressions that generate wind speeds of 30 to 60 km per hour. Once the speed of these winds rise to 60 to 88 km per hour, then they are termed as cyclonic storms. It is followed by severe cyclonic storms which have wind speeds of 89 to 117 km per hour. Then come very severe cyclonic storms which have wind speeds ranging between 118 to 166 km per hour. If these wind speeds are between 167 and 221 km per hour, then we call them as extremely severe cyclonic storms. And finally, if these winds reach a speed of about 222 km per hour, then we call them as super cyclones. So Amphan, which was initially a depression in the Bay of Bengal, has now developed into a complete full super cyclone. And the energy which was required to develop into a super cyclone was received from the Bay of Bengal region. Like I mentioned earlier, in the region of Bay of Bengal, Cyclone Amphan is the first super cyclone since 1999. But please note here, it is the third super cyclone to occur in the whole of North Indian Ocean region after 1999. And when I say the North Indian Ocean region, it includes three regions. One is Arabian Sea, the other one is Bay of Bengal and finally the northern part of the Indian Ocean. So for the North Indian Ocean region, this is the third super cyclone after 1999. The other two super cyclones are Kyar which occurred in 2019 and the cyclone Gonu which took place in 2007. So how did cyclone Amphan develop into a super cyclone? Initially, 
on may 13th an area of low pressure was formed on the south eastern part of bay of bengal region this low pressure was basically formed because of warm sea temperatures as the sun started heating the sea surfaces the air surrounding became warmer and started rising upwards as this warmer air rises upwards it leaves lesser air near the surface so basically when the moist air rises upwards it leaves an area of low pressure underneath so immediately the surrounding cold air which is at a higher pressure rushes in to fill this gap further even this cool air becomes hot because of warmer sea temperatures and start rising upwards so this essentially continues as a cycle cool air filling in the gap and eventually warming in and rising upwards this eventually leads to the intensification of low pressure area system this is what happened in case of the cyclone amphan and you should note here that the warm air rising upwards turn into cumulonimbus clouds as these rising warm air start diverging in the upper region of the atmosphere the clouds also start diverging and these large clouds start spinning and growing in size because of the cyclic nature of the cyclones and note here the center of any cyclone is called as eye and it is a region of very calm nature so as per imd on may 16th this low pressure area system became a depression however at this moment it was still 1000 kilometers away from the coast of odisha but this depression gradually started growing and started moving towards northwards this depression went on intensifying and eventually it was called as a cyclone during this time this depression brought about torrential rainfalls in the regions of tamil nadu and sri lanka and eventually on may 17th because of higher intensification it was upgraded to a severe cyclonic storm but immediately after this this cyclonic storm underwent a burst of intensification which is called as explosive cyclogenesis this eventually led to another phenomenon called as a cyclone bomb or a bomb of cyclone where a cyclone becomes bigger and bigger and becomes more dangerous in just a matter of few hours and after this phenomenon the size of the cyclone amphan became nearly 1000 km wide now there is one basic question why the region of bay of bengal produces more deadlier cyclones as compared to the arabian sea region well over the years it has been observed that the cyclones that form in the bay of bengal region are more dangerous deadlier and intense as compared to those cyclones formed in the arabian sea region there are many reasons behind that the first one is its basic geography the mountains in the east africa tend to divert a large part of winds towards the arabian sea peninsula this helps in quicker dissipation of heats over the region and as a reason the arabian sea is less warmer when compared to the bay of bengal region on the other hand because of the shape of the bay of bengal land region the winds are slower and weaker so this acts as a support for intensification of a cyclone and further bay of bengal is fed by a constant source of fresh water in the form of giant rivers like the ganga and the brahmaputra these waters that end up at the bay of bengal gently warm the surface temperature this constant process makes it difficult for the cooler water underneath to mix up with the warmer waters so this helps the surface remain warm and keep them ready for the intensification of any cyclones that occur in this region and then an additional complication is that the eastern coast of india is like a magnet for cyclones and this is because of the shape of the indian continent and moving to the shape of this landmass cyclones and storms in this region travel in the northwestern direction besides east coast of india has relatively flatter plain land as compared to the other coast so this prevents any deflection of winds from the cyclones and because of this the coastal regions such as odisha and west bengal become more and more vulnerable to these cyclones cyclones hurricanes and typhoons are essentially the same but they are referred to by different names in different regions of the world in the atlantic and northeast pacific they are called as hurricanes similarly in northwest pacific they are called as typhoons and lastly cyclones that occur in south pacific and indian ocean region are called as tropical cyclones please note here that these tropical cyclones are named by the indian meteorological department but the names are nominated or given by countries that will be affected by these tropical cyclones in the indian ocean region these countries include bangladesh india maldives myanmar oman pakistan sri lanka and even thailand so the name amphan has been suggested by thailand and according to imd the next cyclone will be named as nisarga which was nominated by bangladesh and after that it will be called as gati which was nominated by india a lot has changed since 
the 1999 super cyclone in Odisha. However, the cyclone Amphan comes right in the middle of an infectious disease pandemic COVID-19 and as a result, the challenges are much more complicated than ever. So that was all it for today. Thank you.